It might be one Sunday a month, sometimes it might be no Sundays a month. But I think on average we'll try to protest here yeah, two Sundays a month. Sometimes it might be three Sundays a month. Depends what I have to do on any particular Sunday. Uh, but for the time being, because I cannot protest in front of Unitarian Church in Montreal, as a result of court conditions imposed on me, I'll protest here. Um, so yeah, definitely my rights to engage in peaceful public protest at least in terms of protesting in front of Unitarian Church of Montreal, have been suppressed for over a year now as a result of Sue Montgomery falsely accusing me of criminal harassment. And that whole court proce process is still ongoing. I, I was acquitted of the criminal harassment charge, uh, but found guilty of a breach of conditions for asking a legitimate question about Sue Montgomery's bad behavior at a Montreal City Council meeting. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I should not have been found guilty, so I'm appealing that. And I'm also appealing the quite harsh sentence uh, made by Judge uh, Dennis Galeacidis, who has already gained the reputation of a hanging judge by at least one veteran Montreal criminal defense lawyer. Um, Dennis Galeacidis hasn't been a Quebec court judge for very long. Previously, he was a Crown prosecutor. Um, but he was appointed as a Quebec court judge, I believe, even after I was arrested. I believe it was in 2018 uh, that he was appointed. I think, I think it might have been August 2018 where Dennis Galeatsidis was appointed as a Quebec court judge. So to the best of my recollection, he was not even a judge when I was arrested back in December 2017. He's only been a judge for a short time, but he's gaining a reputation as a harsh, uh, severe and indeed, in quotation marks, hanging judge uh, by at least one prominent Montreal criminal defense lawyer, but I think other lawyers are getting that impression too. Um, and uh, so that's it, we're, we're appealing, this could take years. Uh, the Crown's appeal is interesting because they cannot have a normal appeal, they cannot take this to Superior Court and have Superior Court judges appear, uh, rule on the decision. They cannot go to Quebec Court of Appeal and have Quebec Court of Appeal judges overturn the conviction. The only thing that they can do is have, I believe, Quebec Superior Court judge or judges uh, rule that there should be a retrial. So their only thing they can do is get a retrial. So we'll have a whole new trial all over again. Believe me, it won't be as short or sweet as the previous one. Um, so if there's a retrial, I would expect that it would take you know, uh, probably a couple of years before it even gets started, um, at least a year. Um, so like I said, we could be in these court things going uh, into the mid-2020s, you know. So we're having an interesting time. Um, so let's see here, just want to check the uh, recording time. Okay, so 20 minutes, 43 seconds, so there's nine-ish minutes of recording time left. Uh, no overheating that I could tell, thanks to the cool weather temperatures. So let's see here, what else can I talk about? Um, I think we more or less, we, I, we haven't exhausted that by any means, but, but uh, you know, I think I've spoken about that enough. Let's come back to the Gadfly papers of Reverend uh, Todd Eckloff. I'm just going to go get a different picket sign. Yeah, I actually, now that I see one of the other picket signs, I, I have something else to talk about. So, you know, again, we have the Unitarian uh, perversion of justice pick a sign. Then we have this one, Church of the Bad News. This one doesn't get displayed all that much because I'm usually showing the other side of it, which says Church of the Image Tarnishing Ministers. It used to say Church of the Image Tarnishing Minister, and it's specifically applied to Reverend Ray Drennan of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, for tarnishing the image of the Unitarian Church of Montreal, to say nothing of the larger Unitarian religious community, by 
attacking the Roman Catholic state funeral of former Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau in a very opinionated opinion editorial in the Gazette on October 9th of 2000. Um, I was actually reading the Gazette on October 9th of 2000, which happened to be my birthday. When I see this article, and it's titled Wrong Message, and then I can't remember the exact subheading, but it basically was implying that there were some problems with the, the state funeral. There was a photograph, I believe, showing Justin Trudeau and Margaret Trudeau during the funerals. Um, and then I'm reading the article, and there's this person whose identity I did not know when I first started reading the article. Um, and they're basically saying that the state funeral of Pierre Elliott Trudeau should not have been a Roman Catholic religious ceremony. According to the person writing this article, the state funeral should have been secular. Now, that's an argument that can be made, um, but it was being made in quite an offensive manner. Not polite. It was, you know, he basically dismissed the state funeral as a sham state funeral. He used that term at least once. I think twice. So basically saying the whole thing's a sham, not very polite about somebody's funeral. Um, and there's a variety of other intolerant and offensive things that this person said. And when I'm reading this, I'm like, who is this asshole? And I go, oh, did I swear again? Oh, sorry. Uh, anyhow, um, so I go and I look at, at the end of the article down on the right, it said Reverend Ray Drennan, Unitarian Church of Montreal. So the asshole, if you don't mind my saying so, the intolerant and rude asshole <laughs> wrote this opinionated editorial was none other than Reverend Ray Drennan of the Unitarian Church of Montreal. I think I burst out laughing. I certainly was quite happy to see that Reverend Ray Drennan had finally put his foot in it in a very public manner because I knew that I was not the only person reading this who would think the guy's an asshole, an intolerant, rude, nasty jerk. Um, and sure enough, <laughs> sure enough, some days later, there's a bunch of letters to the editor in the Gazette accusing Reverend Ray Drennan of intolerance and bigotry and basically being a jerk. Um, and here's what happened. You know, I, I saw this, I, I knew how totally off base he was. I also knew what an asshole uh, Reverend Ray Drennan was towards me, rude, intolerant, abusive, just a total asshole, if you don't mind my saying so. Um, and uh, so I knew all this. I knew, you know, when I filed my complaint against Reverend Ray Drennan in the beginning, years before, one of my motivations was to protect the church from Reverend Ray Drennan basically publicly attacking me in a nasty way and embarrassing the church. Uh, I was actually trying to protect the church in the earliest stages from, from public embarrassment in terms of Reverend Ray Drennan doing something intolerant and abusive in a very public way as opposed to the private way that he did it in my apartment. So, so at the very beginning of this, I was, I was basically trying to help the church avoid what happened on October 9th to 2000. Uh, Ray Drennan basically pissed off a whole lot of Montrealers and Canadians who read his article in the Gazette. Um, so I wrote a letter to the editor based on my own experiences and so I pointed out, you know, the problems and what he said in, in the op-ed about the Trudeau funeral, brought up my own issues and sent it into the Gazette. I waited a few days and uh, didn't get any kind of response, didn't see any letters to the editor about this published at all. Like, let's say three days later there still were no letters to the editor published uh, so I thought I should call in and at least see if they got the letter so I called up I got the letters editor whose name escapes me at the moment I do know it but I forget it uh, but anyway I, I got the letters editor on the phone and so I asked him you know did you get my letter about Reverend Ray Drennan you know are you planning to publish it and what he said was and I remember this very well Mr. Edgar, you have competition. 
and then he went on to say that there was a ballpark figure of 50 other letters to the editor arising out of Reverend Ray Drennan's wrong message, opinion editorial, and every single one of them, according to him, condemned it. In other words, there were 50 other letters to the editor, approximately. None of them were in favor of Reverend Ray Drennan's intolerant and insulting and quite frankly anti-Catholic, anti-Christian even, anti-religious, ah yes, yes, I forgot about, yeah, towards the end, towards the end of his op-ed, he said, he basically described the Roman Catholic state funeral of former Canadian Prime Minister Pierre Elliott Trudeau as a meaningless ritual, like it's meaningless. Like even from a non-God-believing standpoint, a funeral is still a meaningful ritual. You, know, you may not believe the, the Christian, Catholic, religious component of it, but a funeral is not a meaningless ritual. Uh, and, but he did it in such a way that he essentially implied that all of the rituals of all of the other religions in the world, except Unitarian Universalism, of course, are meaningless. It was like such a broad statement, the way he said, I can't remember exact words, but, but in a very general way, he suggested that, that the rituals of all religions, especially all the God-believing religions, are meaningless. Which is to be expected from a fundamentalist atheist like Reverend Ray Drennan. So yeah, I'd forgotten that. So, so, so anyway, getting back to the letter to the editor, you know, here's the letters editor telling me, well, you know, there's 50 other letters, you know, your, your letter may not get published because we got a whole bunch of other ones, you know. In the end, five letters were published, not including mine. Mine was not published. It was quite long. It was probably too long. Uh, but basically, five representative letters to the editor, including one from a person who described himself as a devout atheist, were published in the Gazette, and they all condemned Reverend Ray Drennan's intolerance and bigotry, and it did not reflect well, not only on the Unitarian Church of Montreal, but also on the larger Unitarian Universalist religious community. I remember some of the letter writers basically saying, is this what Unitarianism is? I thought you're supposed to be liberal.